like to next welcome <laughs> Rabbi Michael Lerner has made it all the way out here. Is his wife is here? There you go. Okay, so we're just going to welcome the rabbi. That's it. Everybody give it up for Michael Lerner. Thank you, and thank you all for being here. Uh, it's important to show that there are some people who still remember and still care about all this. Uh, I was, I got my PhD here in, uh, in uh, 1972. So um, in 1969, um, when I was an activist in this, uh, in this struggle, um, and I remember that this was very close to the place that um, I first overcame my sense of being um, a wimp by picking up a um, one of the the tear gas uh, um, things that had been thrown at, at us as we were demonstrating right around here and throwing it back at them. Yeah. Um, that gave me a whole change, changed view of who I was. Because uh, up till then, I was I thought of myself as a scaredy cat. Uh, anyway, um, not long after that, I got indicted for organizing anti-war demonstrations by the federal government and sent to federal penitentiary, but uh, only for a short time before, but under indictment for about four years thereafter. Um, what I want to say here is something about the larger meaning of all this. You know, this area, uh, in fact, all of uh, all of the Bay Area um, was once, for hundreds and hundreds of years, a place for um, uh, Native Americans, and they um, they lived together. Uh, they were um, careful about the land. And they um, uh, and they showed a different way of living. They didn't have ownership. And I want to say that the primary issue around this is really about ownership. It's about who owns the land. Okay. Now the thing is, is that for a, lo a, a good long time, the world existed in a happy and healthy way without ownership without ownership, without turning things into my private property, your private property, okay? In other words, um, that, um, so when the, um, when the, um, when we started to build the park um, uh, and the, the university said, no, you can't do that, it's ours. We put out a, a, um, a, a leaflet that said, who owns the park, who owns it? And the issue is that there is no, um, that the idea of ownership and hence of control over a certain area was part of um, creating a worldview of uh, what we now would call the, ca the capitalist worldview. It's the worldview that says that some people get to own um, one part of the, the world just by virtue of how much money they have, but actually, more than money, it was how much um, uh, police power and military power they had to get it, okay? This place became the University of California um, by virtue of the military power that was able to, to destroy the uh, previous people who lived here and turn it into whatever they decided they wanted. So the issue, the deeper issue here is about ownership. Now, ownership has been contended against for a long time, and it's not only, you don't have to be a, um, a member of a communist party to believe that ownership is something that needs to be challenged now. Ownership is about selfishness. Um, we have, a, we, this is ours, not yours. We have no idea of how to share it because we've believed we've been, for the last 200 years or so, we have been in, 300 years or so, indo indoctrinated into the vision 
that any decent society is one based on how much, uh, how much power you have. And distributing and the distribution of power is the um, uh, is what determines who's going to live where and who's going to have the right to it. Well, I come from a different tradition, the Jewish tradition in the in the Torah. Okay, so that's now 2,200 years ago at least that the the Torah was con consolidated. Um, there's a chapter um, about ownership. And what it really, what it says is that um, if you um, if you have land that you're working on, you can uh, you can consider that um, your your right to uh, to uh, work it for six years, but then on the seventh year, you've got to let it rest for an entire year, and not not work that land, and. Anything that comes falls down from the what you've worked before is um, free for anybody, including it says explicitly, okay, for those who are not, who don't have a place, for the for the poor, for the for the uh, for the powerless, that they too can come into what you you were working on and take any of the food that falls down there. They can take they can take it as well as you. So the seventh year, this is what we call it the sabbatical year. On the sabbatical year, you don't work the land; you let the land lie fallow. And there are seven, seven, uh, and a series of seven no, such year, uh, years. Um, in other words, forty-nine years. The fiftieth year uh, becomes what's called the jubilee, and on the jubilee everything gets redistributed. So where you originally started with your family and your group, um, you go back to then. So every 50th year, there's a redistribution of wealth amongst all the tribes so that, so that no tribe gets to hold on to anything more. Now the Torah at that point says, and we know some people are not going to get along with this. That it's going to be hard for people to understand that they ha that they have um, the right to challenge this, and so um, here's what God says to the people: y You have to remember, you are only um, you are only short time visitors in this uh, in this land. You can live for sixty or seventy or eighty years, but you're going to die. Okay, but the land is not going to die, and um, and your rights are not the rights of ownership, but the rights of caring for the land in the meantime. And um, and what's my authority to say this? I, God is speaking. I um, I created this land. I created this all. So the land is not yours. You don't own it. You get a right to work it. You get a right to use it. If you use it in a, in a responsible way, uh, in an e environmentally uh, sound way, that is letting the, the land lie, lie um, one year out of every seven without being worked. But this is, kili, it says in Hebrew, kili kol aretz, the whole land is mine. And you are just sojourners here. The atti that attitude was destroyed by capitalism. That attitude said, "No, no, no. We, if we work on this land, um, we own it, and it's ours, and we get to do whatever we want with it." And it's that sense of arrogance that is the heart of uh, heart of a capitalist ethos. That we, whoever, uh, whoever has managed to get get hold of a piece of land this is ours we own it and we don't have a responsibility to look at what the general good is we have to only look at what we want because we own it so ownership is the core of the issue here really um, That's right. it's it's the core of the issue the issue is is the land is this land 
And we were saying that while we were building uh, People's Park, but, but we're, uh, and, we've, and we've said it ever since, that the core issue is, is the land something that is um, a pro, uh, once, once held by somebody, they can do whatever they want with it, and no matter how destructive or how, uh, how ignoring the needs of the larger community, if this is what the owners want to do with it, they have the absolute right. And what we are saying back is, no, that the fundamental reality of the, the universe is that, that the, um, the transformative power of the universe, the God of the universe, if you don't believe in God, you don't have to believe in God, but the, the, the ethical order of the universe is telling us that, the ethical order of the universe is telling us that the land is for the, for the benefit of everyone, and it should not be owned, it should be shared, and what it produces should be shared, and it should be done in a way that really cares for not just the earth, but the cares for the well-being of all people on the planet. So this is a whole different... This is, this is a different ethos, it's a different way of thinking, and really it's the core of all the big problems that this world has now. The, at the core, the issue is this, selfishness or caring for each other. Selfishness or caring for each other. That's what is constantly being debated in other terms. I wish the progressive forces would start using that language rather than simply, well, we have this right. It's not just, it's not a right. It's something, it's a, a, a worldview. And our worldview is different from the capitalist worldview. The capitalist worldview says, whatever we, um, whatever, we have a piece of paper here that says it's ours. Well, that piece of paper was written 200 years ago by a bunch of people who um, used their power use their violence to get rid of the Native Americans and take it over. And then on it saying, you can, this is yours because you have this piece of paper. Okay, that's what private property is all about. But, but a larger vision, a vision that can heal this world is one that says, no, we don't take that seriously anymore. <laughs> what we ask instead is, what is the best for the greatest number of people? What is the way that this land can serve the well-being of human beings, the well-being of animals, and the well-being of the earth itself? And that is the core of what this struggle is really about. So even though right now we look like, okay, we're just a group, a group of people who are complaining about this particular thing, we're actually advocating for a different worldview, a different way of looking at the world. And thank you for being here and doing that.